Okay, so we're working through the integration topic here. This is example 11. Uh, if you had a look at example 10, uh, you would realize that sometimes when we have to do integration by substitution, the actual process of integrating uh, and getting a solution in terms of another variable is relatively straightforward. The idea of trying to then substitute back in for x can be really problematic. So the way to avoid that is not substituting back in for x and leaving uh, the answer in the new variable. However, uh, if we've got a definite integral where we've got bounds here uh, in terms of x and we want to get the final answer by substituting in, we can't substitute in uh, values that are uh, with respect to x, what we've got to do is to change uh, these upper and lower limits so that they are in terms of the new variable as well. And once we do that, uh, we can substitute in to the, the, the new uh, variable and we can get the answer. Okay, So in other words, what we're doing is we're, we're changing the goalposts so that we can keep the answer in the new variable rather than having to substitute back in for x. Okay, and the technical, the, the, the small print is as long as the function is continuous, um, which in, as far as we're concerned, they're all going to be. Okay, so let's have a look at this example here. We've got a, a definite integral. Uh, we're going to use our uh, integration by substitution. Let's have a quick look and we'll determine what we need to do. We've got a composite function here and the product, the other term here, the x squared term, is actually a kind of derivative of the x cubed here. So in other words, that's the kind of straightforward integration by substitution, kind of type 1 I call it, uh, which means that we can be fairly confident we can get everything from the statement uh, u equals x cubed minus 2. We're going to uh, let u equal, technically. So we're going to substitute u in for x cubed minus 2. We can rearrange that or differentiate, first of all, to say that uh, du by dx is 3x squared. And if we multiply through by dx, we get du equals 3x squared dx, which is almost... Uh, what we've got here, we've got 6x squared dx, I've got 3x squared dx, so if I multiply it by 2, then 6x squared dx is the same as 2 du, so that's what I'm going to substitute in here. So, I'm going to swap in, now, uh, at the moment, I'll not put the numbers in, 6x squared dx is the same as 2 du, and my x cubed minus 2, I already know that that's u, and it's u to the power of 4, so I've got this integral of 2 u to the 4 with respect to u, and that will give me uh, my integration. However, I can't put in 0 and 1, so what I've got to do is do a little bit of extra work on finding the new limits. Um, and it's fairly straightforward, so we've determined that u is equal to x cubed minus 2. So all we want to say is, in if, you, if that's the relationship, we're going to assume that these values 0 and 1 are values of x. In other words, when x equals 0, u is equal to 0 cubed minus 2. So u has a value negative 2. And when x equals 1, which is the upper limit here, uh, u is equal to 1 cubed minus 2, which is negative 1. So when we come to our new integrand here, uh, where we've got, right, we have the integral of 2 u to the 4 du, the lower limit, which was 0, is now negative 2, and the upper limit, which was 1, is now negative 1, because that's the u equivalent of 
our values. And as long as we stick with that, we should be able to get the, the correct answer. So let's just go ahead and integrate. It becomes 2u to the 5 over 5. We've not got a constant of integration because it's a definite integral. And we're going to substitute in the values negative 1 and 2. So the upper limit we substitute in first. So it becomes 2 times negative 1 to the 5 over 5. Subtract 2 times negative 2 to the 5 over 5. Uh, negative 1 to the power 5 is negative 1. Multiplied by 2 is negative 2, so that first fraction is negative 2, two fifths. Uh, negative 2 to the power 5 is still negative. 2 to the power 5 is 32. So multiplied by 2 is negative 64. So it becomes negative 2 fifths minus negative 64 fifths negative 2 fifths plus 64 fifths is 62 fifths let's just make a wee bit of extra room okay what was that in the end i've got lots of equal signs to remember technically that was just my the integral of a six x squared, I'll write that in a little bit neater. The integral of six x squared multiplied by x cubed minus two to the power of four with respect to x from zero to one has a value of sixty two over five. Okay, so what did we do there? Uh, we used our integration by substitution uh, to substitute uh, for u instead of x. And instead of then substituting back for x, we kept it in terms of u, but importantly, we had to work out these new limits. And we just used the original substitution relationship. Uh, substituted in for x in each case to find the new value in terms of u and we can actually substitute those in uh, for u and we still get the exact same answer as if we had been working in x okay so we're shifting all the goalposts to u and that's how we do it with a, a definite integral we'll have a look at uh, maybe a trig one in the next example but uh, you can have a look at that in a moment <laughs>